how fast can I make shiny rocks for an impatient four-year-old? That's what I am going to test with this National Geographic rock tumbler. I am getting back out a pandemic era hobby that I had with my older child who lost interest, but now my four-year-old is getting to that point where he really loves shiny rocks. But the problem is this thing has to run for weeks. It comes with four different stages of grit and then an optional polishing foam on top of that and it comes with a nice instruction manual with recommended times for each grit so you can see it's kind of at least a week for each one of them so what i am curious to find out here is if i run this for the bare minimum time on each grit or maybe even a little less what does the final result look like so i am not going to tell you how to use this thing in this video it comes with great instructions so you can read those and figure that out yourself i'm just going to show you the results so what does it look like after each stage so if you're a parent trying to figure out if this is worth your time and money you can you kind of look at the results and see if it's worth the investment for starters it does come with a bunch of rocks and at this point i don't remember in this ziploc bag which ones came with it and which ones my kids just found outside but you can see that these are all rough kind of angular jagged and not super shiny whereas if you look at the box or kind of the marketing materials it shows these really nice shiny looking polished gems so i want to see if i can actually get that result the one thing i will note if you're a parent considering buying one of these, is this is a higher end model, at least as far as amateur rock tumblers go. I think this thing was at least a hundred bucks. Um, before that, we did try one of the much cheaper ones. I think you can just get on Target for 40 or something, and it died instantly. So if you look at this thing, it does have a belt drive. So there's a motor down here and a pulley system with a belt that drives this wheel that rotates the tumbler. And I don't think you can see it in the lighting here. This belt is wearing down, so it's shedding a little bit of rubber, and it does come with a replacement belt. But I ran this for weeks during the pandemic, um, weeks at a time, and I don't think I've had to replace the belt yet, versus the cheap one we bought initially just sort of shredded immediately and didn't even get through a couple days um, before it died. So read reviews. If you don't want to spend over 100 bucks, totally understandable. But um, read reviews and make sure it's not just going to die on you. I found this one worth it. Another quick note, as I will demonstrate, if I turn it on here. I don't know how well the camera picked up that noise, but these things are loud. So not exactly something you just want to leave running on the kitchen counter or in the bedroom, depending on your house and the acoustics. I have mine down here in the unfinished part of my basement, but you might want to put it in a garage or something. Because again, it's loud and it needs to run 24-7 for days at a time so i guess you could turn it off overnight or something if the noise is keeping people up but pretty loud so okay that is it for the introduction we will come back in three days i'm going to do again that minimum time for grit number one and see what the result of the first stage looks like okay so here we are after the first three days with the first grit uh, and i'm happy to report that my four-year-old's reaction upon seeing the rocks come out of the tumbler was they're done um, I have the original pile or some samples from the original pile over here on the left. And you can see how these are significantly more jagged. That first um, rough pass with all of them tumbling against each other really does round them down quite a bit. Um, one quick note from the directions. Again, I'm not going through the full procedure here. They do recommend rinsing these off outside because you really do not want to rinse that grip, grit down your pipes. You can ruin your pipes. So we took these out and hosed them off. And I guess they do look a little more shiny or glistening when they're wet. If we let them dry out, they might not kind of look as shiny. But again, you can see the pretty stark difference here between this pile over on the right that has the more rounded edges and the pile over on the left that is still very jagged. So I guess next up, we are going to go on to grit number two and run this again to see if we can get even more shiny. All right, here we go after six days at speed two with grit number two. And it's nice and sunny now, so you can see how, especially when they're wet, some of these are really starting to shine. Again, I think as far as the four-year-old is concerned, this would be perfectly sufficient, and we would not need to go on to grit three. But I am going to go through the whole process here to see how much we can get out of the final few steps. I should have saved, I guess, some from the end of step one for a side-by-side -side comparison. Again, I will pull out here's the bag of... Uh, the originals you can see in there how extremely rough and dull these all are for a nice side by side there 
So, now we are going to go on to the minimum time for Git Grit 3, which is again going to be six days, but now at speed one. So, let's go check that out and then we will see the results. Okay, here we have the end of phase three, which to be honest, just eyeballing it probably doesn't look that much different from phase two, again, especially compared to the original stuff over here on the left. So again, what I should have really done is pulled out one of the same type of rock after each stage, so I could then do a side-by-side -side comparison at the end. Uh, but I didn't do that, so you can kind of go back through the different screenshots in this video and pause it if you really want to try and get that side-by-side -side comparison. But next, we are going to go ahead and do phase four, which recommends seven to 10 days at speed one. So again, we're gonna do that for the minimum of seven days and see what it looks like. Actually, a quick note before we do that, something I probably should have pointed out by now. Um, everything I've been showing so far is still wet because I just rinsed it. So they are clearly less shiny when they start to dry out. You can sort of see this one drying off in real time and the difference in shininess level between the wet and the dry part. Um, so the instructions do recommend coating with a little bit of mineral oil at the very end to really give them that shine. So I will do that after all the polishing as well and do a side-by-side -side with and without the mineral oil. All right, so here we have the results of phase four. And again, to the untrained eye, I'd say there probably isn't that much of a difference between phase four and phase three. Again, unless I should have staged one of each rock from each phase for side-by-side, -side, but didn't do that. Um, as far as my four-year-old is concerned, I'd say these are definitely good enough. There is this final foam polishing step as opposed to grit that it did come with, and it says to run that for three days. So I guess we will try this as well, even if it seems like we're sort of reaching a plateau here. And then we will come back and see what the final step looks like after all four stages of grit and the foam. Okay, here we have the final, final result of that foam polishing step where, again, to the untrained eye, I think a four-year-old probably would have been perfectly happy after just phases one or two. Um, it's a cloudy day now, so we're not getting them to look as shiny out here in the sun, but they are still wet because I just rinsed them. So I think what we will do after this is actually take some of these inside, let them dry off, and then I believe I read something in the manual about applying mineral oil to really get them to shine, which kind of makes sense if you're gonna leave them in a display case or something where people aren't gonna be touching them. But again, if you have a small child who is gonna be handling, handling these, you probably don't want oil all over them. But again, I'll go inside under some more consistent lighting conditions and do Daddy, some comparisons. Josh, oh, Josh, shh, okay. Um, and do some comparisons with that. But as you can hear, the four-year-old uh, does not want the oil on them. So we'll see. So again, my four-year-old vetoed the mineral oil step, but I can put all four stages here on screen at the same time so you can see them side by side. And I'd say that to the untrained eye, you're probably not gonna notice much difference after stage two, if you're not looking that closely or if this is just for a kid's rock collection. If you just look at stage one, I do still see some dimples and kind of roughness that gets smoothed out in stage two. But then stage three and onward is just more and more polishing that, again, a young child probably isn't going to care about. So you can get results faster without those extra steps. So in summary, if you want shiny rocks for your kids and you think this is a project they would be interested in, you can probably do it in a week or maybe two and you don't need to actually run this for an entire month to get results that a small child is going to be impressed with. If you have a comment or a suggestion or you think I'm stupid and this video is dumb, go ahead and leave a comment below this video. I'm a mechanical engineer, not a geologist or a real gem collector, so this certainly is not my area of expertise. And if you saw something I did that was stupid or could be better or whatever, um, leave a useful comment and I'll pin it as a heads up for people who are watching this video in the future. But again, I wanted to make this review, which would hopefully be useful for other parents out there who have or are considering buying something like this. Thank you.